Today, I get to finally do some upgrades to the wife's 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL. That's gonna really improve its off-road capabilities. We're gonna get rid of this old plastic bumper, and then I'm gonna show you how to install a winch plate, a winch, a factory steel bumper, and skid plate. Stick around. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today the wife's Jeep is gonna get a little bit of a facelift. Ever since we bought this, these plastic bumpers have just not been something I've been a fan of. So what we've got is some steel bumpers. They're actually a takeoff of another 2018 Jeep JL. A big thanks to my buddy Josh over at SoCal Ruby on Instagram. Go check him out, he's got a cool build going on over there. But he hooked us up with these steel bumpers, We've got the skid plates, and we've got also got the ends on there, which I don't think I'm gonna do. I think we're gonna do the stubby, but I guess that all kind of depends on what the wife thinks. We've also got the worn winch plate and all the hardware. Should be a pretty straightforward install. I've got a Smittybilt 9,500 pound winch with synthetic line. We'll take a closer look at that when we go to put it all together. And I've also got a Factor 55 flat link in yellow, which is gonna match perfectly with my wife's hella yellow Jeep. Now, one thing I am concerned about is all the weight we are gonna be adding here to the front and if that front suspension is gonna droop a little bit. So what I did is I actually weighed everything already just to kind of see where we're at. So the steel bumper weighs 53 pounds, the steel skid plate is 16 pounds, the winch is 53 pounds, and thankfully it's synthetic line, otherwise it would be a little bit heavier than that and the worn winch plate is 25 pounds for a grand total of 147 pounds. That's quite a bit of weight, and I know that when we take this plastic bumper off and the plastic skid that we're not going to take a whole lot of weight off. And if this weighs 25 pounds, we'll be lucky. But we'll see, we'll figure out what the difference is. But what I wanna do first is take some measurements of the front suspension and just see how much it droops. So let's do that. All right, what I'm gonna do here is put a little piece of tape right above the center of the wheel to give us a good reference point. And then we'll take a measurement here. And I think this is pretty important to do because if we end up getting a ton of sag, we may end up wanting to add a little coil spacer. So I'm gonna mark it right here at 41 inches. And that'll give us a good reference point. We'll see where we end up after we add the bumper. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the plastic skid plate. And there are two eight millimeter bolts here on the rear that need to come right out. Now that we've got those removed, then we have eight little plastic tabs that are in between the back side of the bumper and the front side of the skid plate. And just grab a screwdriver in here and pop out the top section and then the whole thing will just come right out. Just like that, easy. All right, now that we got them all out, Got the whole thing out, that was easy. Now we're gonna remove this plastic piece that's behind the bumper here, and there's two plastic tabs on the bottom, and then there are six plastic tabs along the front here that just need to pop up and pull out. Very easy to do. All right, once the last one's out, Pull this out and set it aside. We're not gonna be using this anymore. The next thing we need to do is remove the fog light connector and there's a little tab right here. Just press it down real hard and that pops right out. All right, we're in the home stretch. The last thing we need to do is remove the eight 18 millimeter bolts. There's four on each side and you'll want a deep socket with an extension. And what I'm gonna do is actually just break these loose and then I'm gonna use an air ratchet to make this go a little faster. But you can use just this the whole time if you want to. We should be able to. Come on. There we 
we go. Easy. So removing that bumper was really straightforward, no issues at all. And the great news is I put it on the scale and it weighs 33 pounds, which is a lot more than I expected, which means you subtract that from all the weight that we are putting on here, and the total weight that we'll be adding will only be 114 pounds, which is really good news. That's less than I expected. Now, I was taking a look at everything here, and there is this cross member between the two frame rails that's specific, I believe, to the plastic bumpers. So this is gonna have to come off in order for the worn winch plate to come on. Normally, if you had the metal bumper group to start with, you would have these little brackets here on the bottom. Thankfully, uh, Josh supplied me with these when he took his bumper off, so I've got everything that I need to make the install go smooth, but I'm gonna pull this guy off here real quick. So it looks like there's just two 16 millimeter bolts that we just need to pull off here. Okay, sometimes when you're doing mods to your vehicle, you run into a few little hiccups, and this is no exception. So the challenge I'm having right now is I was sitting here mocking up the worn winch plate, and what I've realized is the plastic bumper group has different mounting points than the metal bumper group. So when we moved that bar that was across there, that was something that was specific to the plastic one, and it's got different nuts on the back side of this frame rail to allow you to mount things. And so we have to reuse the hardware and the mounting points from the metal bumper group. So we're gonna have to come up here with a little solution. So I'm gonna bring the camera down. I think I've got this figured out. So if you had the metal bumper group, there were these brackets down here and these bolts that went through and secured this bracket to this section here. Now, you can see that there's nothing to hold that bolt in there. Like this, where we had the mounting bracket for that cross member, these just screw right in. Well, there should be two of these here that allow us to screw this right in. So, because there's not, that's a problem, because you cannot get up underneath here if I wanted to put a nut behind there because there's no way to access it because of the way this bracket is, you can't access it. So after filming this section of the install, I later realized that you can buy the Mopar rib nuts that fit perfectly in these holes and allow you to use the correct bolt size. I ended up using some nut certs, and while this solution worked for me, I recommend visiting your Jeep dealer or Mopar parts store online to buy the recommended rib nuts for just a couple bucks. Okay, I got the nut certs installed, and I used a little blue Loctite just to give them a little extra strength, but they fit in there really well, and I happen to have a couple bolts that fit perfectly with there. Now, this is, again, that original bracket, and this is the new bracket that comes with the worn winch plate kit, and I'm gonna install these carriage bolts now, uh, because once we get in there, it's gonna be tough to get these behind there with the um, sway bar disconnect. And this is gonna go back originally like it would have, and then this one is gonna come right up in there, and then I'm just gonna screw right in to those nut certs. We're gonna leave everything loose for now and uh, wait till we get everything fit, mocked up, and make sure it's all squared away before we tighten anything down. Okay, now that we've got both mounting brackets mocked up, and again, these are all loose fitted, we're gonna take the winch plate and we're gonna slide it over those four carriage bolts just like that. And then, Warren supplies these zip ties. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to zip tie these to hold them up. Okay, with everything in place, I'm gonna go ahead and install the nuts on the back side of those carriage bolts. It's just a 15 millimeter, and you're gonna to wanna to use a deep socket. And again, I'm not gonna tighten these all the way. With those carriage bolt nuts on there, well now what I wanna do is I'm gonna line up the winch plate holes here on the bumper. That's actually where the bumper bolts will go through. And then I'm gonna tighten down that zip tie to hold it into place. Same on this side. 
except for having to install those nut certs. This is going really smooth. It actually looks pretty good and we're just about finished. Now what I need to do now is uh, set up the winch, wire it up, and then we're gonna mount the winch and then we got a couple more brackets we've gotta install and then we'll put the bumper on. But my wife just hollered at me and said, dinner's ready, so I'm gonna go eat some dinner and we will finish this up in the morning. All right, so this morning we're gonna put the winch on and the bumper and skid plate on and then we're gonna be done. We're almost there. Now what I have here is the Smittybilt 9500 XRC winch. I've got all the cables and mounting brackets and the great thing about this winch is all the wires are labeled A, B, C, D and then all the connectors here are also labeled and color coded which makes setting this up super easy and then we'll run the wires up through the hood to the battery. Now this winch is one that I have been using on my Jeep for over three years and I have used it many times to recover myself and to recover others. It's worked out really well for me. I think Warren is a great winch if it's in your budget. I have a buddy that does recovery for a living and he swears by Warren, uh, but this one has worked for me and it was just, the price was right. Now we also have the synthetic line and today we're just gonna be hand feeding it, but we'll properly do that here in the next couple days. Uh, they do supply this polished fairly, but I actually have an, a Factor 55 one that I used to have on my Jeep. And then uh, we'll get all these other brackets on and get the bumper on. Let's get this in there, guys, because I'm ready to get this finished. Okay, with the winch all wired up, we're gonna line it up here with the four holes where we'll be throwing some bolts up underneath. And then we'll run these wires. Easy day. So there's a perfect place right on the outside of the headlight behind the grill to run the positive and negative winch cables. And I'm just gonna use my favorite tool here, Mr. Coat Hanger, and run that all the way down and then hook up the wires and pull those through. So I finished hooking up the positive and negative cables to the battery. Now what we're gonna do is just test to make sure this works before we button everything up. And you always wanna make sure that your vehicle is running before you use your winch, because it's just a lot of draw on the system. So we're just gonna hook this up and see if this works. There we go. We're in business. All right, a couple quick things we've got to do before we can mount the bumper. First, we've got to take this license plate bracket off, and this should just pop right off. There's some plastic tabs behind here, hopefully. There we go. Okay, and with that off, the Warren kit does supply this license plate bracket, and that allows us to run the rope through here, but still be able to mount the license plate. Now we need to remove this center top plate and there are uh, five T45 Torx bolts that we just gotta pull out of here. Okay, the last thing we need to do before we mount up the bumper is to add these supplied spacers that came with the worn winch kit. Now that we've got those on there, the bumper is ready to get installed and I think I'm just going to go see if I can find an extra set of hands to give me help. Okay, we got the bumper loosely mounted, but I want to point out that we were going to mount the box on the side here of the winch but it got in the way, you can see here that it wouldn't fit and there's no way to actually mount that. So I'm gonna have to shift this over to the center, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just secure the bumper and then I'll worry about the winch here in a bit. Okay, so we've got the bumper completely mounted. It's all secured. We went through and secured all the worn winch plate bolts, so all that is tightened down. And then I'm monkeying around with this winch. Well, I'll tell you, moving that box over here, because you know, initially we wanted it on the side, moving it to the center meant I had to readjust all the wires, which meant getting back there, loosening everything up. I actually had to loosen the winch, so a little bit of a fight, but now we've got it where we want. I like how low profile that winch is. 
Also went ahead and put on all the synthetic line. Installing the synthetic line is an easy process. Just run it around the drum and bolt it to the designated hole and then begin spooling the line from side to side evenly. Now I did it by hand here, but I will be heading out here in the next day to spool the line using the weight of the vehicle, which will ensure it's got some good tension on the line. And we just installed the fair lead here, so that was easy. I did have to get some longer bolts. Thankfully, I always keep a bunch of extra bolts, uh, but I did need longer bolts. Now what we're gonna do is put on the Factor 55 link here on the end, and you're gonna need a, a little tool here to pull out the ring, but then that guy just pops right out, and that just pops right back in. And then just be sure to reinstall that ring that's in there to lock everything into place. And we're in business. So I'm gonna get this all tightened up and then all we need to do is hook up the lights, which is cool because now we have LEDs on the bumper and the skid plate. We're almost done and then we'll take those measurements and see where we're at. All right, before I mount up the steel skid plate, there's one thing I should really point out and that is the bumper has been pushed out a little bit because of that spacer and the winch plate that we mounted push the bumper out just a little bit. So we have five bolts here on the bottom that the skid plate's gonna mount to, and those are gonna line up just fine, but there's a couple in the rear here that may not line up, and they recommend you know, elongating the holes here on the skid plate. And so I've already done that. You may or may not have to do that, but I'm gonna leave everything really loose, and hopefully this will fit just fine. All right, now all I gotta do is connect up the fog lights. And presto, now we've got some upgraded LED fog lights. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is we've got all these empty holes, and what we wanna do is put the bolts in here that used to hold the metal plate, and the worn kit comes with some nuts, so we can just bolt those right back in there, no problem. And that way we don't have a bunch of empty holes. I am super happy with how this turned out. You know, now we've got a nice steel bumper up here. We've got some recovery capability. We've got a little more clearance where the tires are. Just love the look of the Mopar bumper. There's some other good looking bumpers out there, but the key thing here, guys, is you can do this yourself. This is a project that you can do in the garage with some basic tools. Now, we talked in the beginning of the video about all the weight we added and, well, we did lose half an inch, which not a big deal, but maybe I'll add a little bit of a puck up there to kind of help get some of that back, but I'm not unhappy with that because the recovery capabilities that we have are gonna far outweigh that. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Please remember to travel the trails responsibly. Thanks for watching.